is episode 75 of This Week in Grip. It's been a while since we've been on, but we're back. I got Alan on the line. Alan, how's it going, dude? It's going good. Going real good. Been a good week. How's everything been for you? Oh, it's it's great. Last week I dealt with snow. I got like multiple workouts a day, shoveling, and burned extra calories, so I can't complain. Got all my grip workouts in, got my all my upper body workouts in. Squeezed in like 50 repetitions per leg of uh, one leg exercise, so I actually got a leg workout in. So um, yeah. <laughs> that's get that that's in. funny. I caught your recent uh, YouTube videos where you and Luke were screwing around with the inch. I thought I was going to see some lunges or something with that for a second there. <laughs> you guys were well, looking desperate for what you were going to be doing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Luke actually um, performs better almost on the inch dumbbell if he goes from a deficit standing on those rubber 25 pound bumpers Uh uh-huh so we're like well shit maybe he can snatch the damn thing if we're standing on that on that box squat platform so we we tried it oh my gosh dude that's a long pick yeah and it was it was like to the point of of hazardous for my back like i had to uh I had to pull a girl out of a car one time. She uh, her she wrecked on Christmas, probably 2010 or something like that. And uh, th- that's what it felt like reaching. I was like my body was on the the like the car was on its side, so I'm like my belly's on the on the side of the the car door, reaching in through like the window to try to pull her out, and that's what it felt like. And, but it actually felt like more hazardous trying to do it with the inch dumbbell than when I was like pulling someone's body out of a car. So <laughs> it's and sure. like Luke said something about like it feels like I'm going to dislocate my shoulder or something like that. So oh yeah, I imagine he can't keep things pulled where he's supposed to, trying to reach that extra. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a risky move. Yeah, yeah be cool to see if a guy could do it in a safe way though. <laughs> Don't yeah. see a lot of deficit inch pulls. Right, or even a like a like a deficit row or an inverted uh, inch row or something like that. Because I have those, I have that set of gravity boots, those inversion boots. That you hang oh, on, yeah. Uh, hang on a chin-up bar. I don't know what the load rating is on those things, man. I'd be I'd be kind of afraid to do it with the inch dumbbell. But um, as it is, my body's too long, and I can't, like, do a, you know, on those gravity boots, I can't really do a, a full-length inverted row of any of any sort like an upside down pull up or upside down pull down so that would be an impressive feat because that's that'd be literally like almost like a pull up yeah but you'd be upside down pulling the inch i've never i've never even thought of that that is that's impressive you need to find a way to get yourself jacked up in the air yeah we gotta figure that that. out I, I have a video up where I'm doing it with the blob, and I'm trying to do, like, an upside-down blob clean. I know that's on YouTube. I don't know if you ever saw that. It was several years old. No. But, you know, it would stand right. I wonder if that's, a, if that's an easier lift for you like that, as weird as it might sound, because I was, I was just doing some research on, like, grip strength in various positions, mm-hmm. and evidently when your arm is straight overhead, mm-hmm. you're, you're actually at your strongest. Grip strength wise, according to wow. some studies that I was seeing. So yeah, you would think you could cool. like pick up the inch hanging upside down, probably hold it longer than you could hold it standing, theoretically. Yeah. Even wow. though it might seem awkward. Right. But it'd be neat to neat to see. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I have to try that sometime, no doubt about it. <laughs> For today's call, everybody, we're gonna be going over feats of strength that have taken place recently. I'm looking at the hashtag page on um, on Instagram for This Week in Grip, and my gosh, Alan, we're almost at 2,300 posts on Instagram yep. using This Week in Grip. That is amazing. I appreciate everyone doing that. That is huge. And even though we haven't been covering the, the posts that have included that hashtag, you understand, everybody, this is something that uh, when someone clicks on this, they are opening up almost 2,300 posts of something from multiple people all over the world, and they're seeing, holy cow, there's a lot of people that are tagging This Week in Grip. And then what that does is it gives you know validity to grip training. And when people see this, wow, I mean, this guy's doing axle, and this girl's doing axle, and I've got to find out more about these axles, and wow, there's a whole bunch of people doing ring lifts, and what's this... Uh, 
what's this grip games? You know that that's it's that's how it happens, man. That's how it grows. So keep on doing that. That's really really awesome. I see there's lots of people that are doing it. You know, as I slide down the page, there's there's lots of people that are doing more than one. So it's it, that's really been flowing well. So keep up the good work with that, everybody. Uh, I I'm I'm like. 23 people away or something like that from or maybe even less than 20 people away from 10,000 subscribers on this channel so if you haven't subscribed yeah, like 15 yet, now i think is yeah. that right okay yeah i knew it was yep. getting close so the we're ticking down so if you haven't subscribed yet be sure to subscribe and sign up for the notifications whenever a new video comes up that you do that by just clicking the bell that is that appears there below the video or on my channel and then every time a video goes up, you'll get a notification on your smartphone and uh, also an email into your inbox that comes into the social folder. Uh, I've got the playlist pretty much updated. There might be one show that I have to add in there, and I'll, I'll of course, have to do today's show. But uh, there's a whole entire play playlist for This Week in Grip. So this is my recommendation. What you want to do is, if you've just started, listening to the This Week in Grip podcast, you want to go to that playlist and you want to start right from the beginning. And when you do that, every time you watch a video, if you get interrupted, because especially, you know, a lot of these are like over an hour long. And I understand not everybody has a, an hour of free time to watch these videos. So what you want to do is when you have time to go back and watch again, go to your history section of your library on YouTube and you'll be able to go back and pick up just about right where you left off the last time that you were uh, watching one of those videos on YouTube. So go ahead and do that. That's a, that's a really good way to do it. And naturally, if you have any comments or anything that you'd like to add, then, then just post something on the below the video on YouTube and uh, we'll get back to you especially if you have any questions that I, uh, that I can cover in a Q&A video. I've got a lot of those coming coming your way. In fact, uh, I've got a whole series that are going to be trickling out some of the uh, bigger questions from the Ask Me Anything that I did on Reddit a, uh, a week or so ago. So be looking for that. And also there's a link to that Ask Me Anything. You can go back and read everything as well. It's in the description box of those videos when they come out. Uh, let's see. And don't forget to hit like on the video, guys. That really helps us, and you've been doing a great job with that as well. I really appreciate that. What else, Alan? We got any other, like, uh, business to cover as far as, you know, supporting the channel and the effort of GRIP? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, pretty well covered there. What's our, what's our next competition on the horizon? It's GRIPmas, right? Yeah, GRIPmas is coming up. It's right up, around man. the corner. Yep. So, uh, and then Mike Rinderly was just at the old school grip co competition that Dan Senadoza put on yesterday. And ah. the winner was John Fulber. And I, he said something like that's his third consecutive victory in grip contests or something like that. So uh, I've spoken with John on the, on the phone. Seems like a nice guy. Looks like he put it all together for a win. Uh, Rinderly came in third. I forget who he said. I think he tied, maybe tied for second. So um, it was like first and then two seconds and then after that. I don't know who all went to that competition. I know Pat Mazels went. Don't know where he finished. Uh, heard he had a hard time with the hammers, keeping his arm level. But uh, aside from that, Rinderly did a real good job. He was right there. He was he was first and second in most of the events and then got fourth. So uh Ended up, he had, you know, he was right there at the top at the end. Just didn't pull off the victory, I guess. So I guess how, it went well. And then the next. How upper, strict a thing is that? I'm sorry. What's that? With the how how strict a thing is that with uh, with arm level on yeah. uh, when they're doing well, leverage? There's really no standard. Um, uh, you know, if you look at like the medley stuff at Chris Rice's place for gripness, I mean, they allow quite a bit of drop. Um, okay, but I was messing around with that. Yeah, well, from what I understand, Dan was being pretty strict. Like, I think Pat ended up uh, getting a zero on the event because of uh, arm drops. So, oh. yeah, 
So, because I, you know, I'm not levering like, but the, you know, I saw Joe Sullivan just did like 25 pounds or something like that to the teeth. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's just crazy stuff. But yeah. Yeah. I have no concept. I was doing like a like an eight, and I think I even it just feels weird on my wrist. But when I got that out there, I have no concept of where my where my arm is when I'm watching this head coming towards me. You know, right. it's like is it staying up? I you know I don't know. So yeah. I was always curious. There was like a you know. In other lifts, there's a there's an element of tilt that's that's acceptable as long as it's not like uh, you know deliberate so much, you know a few degrees, yeah. you know something like that. But so okay, yeah, just get your yeah, wrist so, to bend like that is crazy. Right. I mean, so I was at I was at Michigan, I think in like maybe 2006, 2007, something like that, 2008, and they had a sledge lever, and it was just. Judging it is just a nightmare. So, like, we we uh, we even used to run a sledge lever in in our contest. I think it was 2005 at uh, GGC 2005, and it was just we we had people leaning against a, a yoke, basically a strongman yoke, and they had their arms strapped to it. It was ridiculous. It's just it's just a pain in the ass. Anyone anyone that runs that event is either a glutton for punishment or literally wants to get in a fight with every competitor. <laughs> It's just so hard to, it's just so hard to judge it. And if people train it wrong, they go to the contest. They're already, they're already developing a habit of uh, bad form, and then it just, it just gets even worse at the event. They start panicking and stuff like that. It's, it's just an event that is troublesome. Yeah, seeing people do that from the floor looks like a better way, you know, when they kind of, more or less down in that position. Yeah, be an easier way to gauge it, but yeah. Huh. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It's there's there's not as much there's there's no way you can like cheat it when it's on the floor. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's not. It, and the problem is, it's not even. It's an inadvertent cheat when you do it. When you when you drop your hand, sometimes it's not like it, you don't know wh- where your hand is because you're looking at yeah, the hand exactly. of the camera. So going that's, by that's, feel, yeah. unless unless you're videotaping your attempts in, in training, you don't know where you're going to end up. End up right. That's yeah. That's exactly the point I was making. Is like you don't, you, you lose it in space. You're concentrating on not conking yourself with the thing, you know. So yeah. Uh, hmm. So let's go yeah. ahead and start uh, covering some feats, man. I actually have a list that I've been every once in a while. I'll say, man, we got to talk about that. So I think I've got a a list here. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I wanted to say was. Uh, thank you to Big Red Doc for posting episode 73 on the subreddit because when we did that, I actually asked if someone was listening if they could please post it on the the grip training subreddit at Reddit, and he ended up doing it for us. So um, I remember catching that in the comments. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So uh, and then sleep eat lift. Maybe we already talked about this. I'm not sure, but sleep eat lift suggested some reciprocation from the community by sending people there. Um, since they have sent people to the grip board, so um, you know. Well, we haven't mentioned that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, as a matter of fact, I know that's how a lot of guys seem to get started over on the grip board is by coming from Reddit. So. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what but, I understand. Yep. Yep. Um. <clears throat> let me ask you this, dude. Have you been following this guy Derek P. Lewis on Instagram? No, I don't, no. That doesn't ring a bell at all. Okay, so I do suggest people check him out. He He's posted a lot of cool things on his Instagram. He's a Canadian guy. I think he's competed with, um, I think he competed in the Cross Canada competition that went on in, like, September. And so what he posts is a lot of, grip training that he's doing with like more simple equipment and homemade stuff so he hasn't picked up like a lot of the like iron mine stuff or arm assassin stuff per se but he's getting a lot of effective training done with just like standard plates and putting plates on a on a like a pipe or a, a piece of iron to create block weights and you know pony clamps and, and things like that it's pretty good ideas so if if people are operating on a limited budget or they're not really interested in 
competing on standardized implements, but you'd rather, but you do want to get strong hands. He might be a good uh, Instagram for you to check out because he's he's put up some pretty cool stuff. It's it's Derek P. <laughs> Lewis. Well, D-E-R-E-K, yeah. Middle initial P as in Paul, and then Lewis L E W I S. So you 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 weren't aware of him, Alan? No, but I'm glad I found it now because he's got some humorous memes on here. <laughs> <laughs> says abs are cool but have you ever tried stuffed crust pizza <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool no you know what i'm um, talking about the um like some of the minimalist stuff like not having the the specific grip things there's a lot of guys that get seriously strong without ever buying you know and having a room full of all the different toys out there mm-hmm. you know with just a couple things they can just get just get brutally strong, you know, a sledgehammer, you know, a piece of pipe, literally, you know, that's yeah. like, that takes them a long ways, you know? Right. I mean, you might not get like, you know, it's not going to necessarily get you clothes and grippers, but you're going to have a serious grip on you in the end. Yeah. No surprise here. Yeah. He's got a lot of, a lot of different stuff you see going on in his page. Yep. Well, quite the hand spread too. You see him palming those 10 pound plates. Uh, I didn't catch that one. I might have missed that okay. one. Okay. Well, geez, it looks like this guy could probably get get some serious wide pinch power going on, to be my guess. Yeah. Mm, nice. Yeah, I think he's a pretty big dude. I think he's you know fairly fairly big dude. I I could be wrong, but but he he got so like I don't know how I found him. Maybe through like grip strength tag or something like that, but. It, it just seemed like once he got into it, he got into it big time. Like not not necessarily from buying all the stuff, but like he was just like, "How can I start doing this?" And it reminded me a lot of me, because I made a lot of my own stuff back in the day. Like I, like I utilized my sand weights, my plastic weights with the sand inside of them, and used a lot of just like rope and uh, wood, two by fours, things like that. And I saw a lot of that that kind of a reflection of myself in his Instagram. So I thought that was pretty cool. I I really think that's almost the better way of getting started. It kind of forces you to build like a real foundation mm-hmm. rather than jumping into the specifics because then you miss a lot of the, a lot of the bread and butter part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, you just start working like one, you just, it's too one dimensional. You just to kind of get the individual things. You yeah. miss out on that big, that big base. So, yeah, I um, hear you. Yeah. Yep. Well, There's cool. another guy yeah, I wanted to talk about, dude. Um, yeah. It's Lincoln Grant 87. Okay, this guy popped up on my radar. So he did. I don't know when this was. Okay, this is this is going back like weeks and months. Okay, he did 525 by four double overhand no hook deadlift. So 525 for four reps double overhand, no hook grip. Now, when was this? have no idea. But he, his latest video is a 700 pounds for three deadlift with, a, with an alternated grip. So if we go back a little bit, this, I'm, sure the, I'm sure the video is on here somewhere. I don't know. But, I mean, this guy, is, he, he's got some serious support grip going on. Well, he does. Yeah, you see the picture of him with, with his uh, with his Jason outfit on for for Halloween. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Well, this dude's beefy. Yeah, dude. I oh, and like I said, I don't know job. when. I don't know when he puts. Oh, jeepers! He's got some freaking legs on him. Damn. Yeah. No, he's <laughs> he knows his way around the weight room. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, there's freaks out there. That's that's what it's about, man. There's freaks out there, and you know, uh, I haven't I haven't retained every single feat that's gone down in the last few months, guys. While we've been covering all these other big topics, but I'll tell you what, the stuff that catches my eye, I've been taking down, I've been taking notice of. Um, Uni Mahonen put up a 21 second silver bullet hold with a number four uh, recently. Um, oh wow. Yeah, that was. Is that, that was is that impressive. over the new? Is that over the new world record? Because Gabriel yeah, Sun just the new set the record. record. I believe the current record is like 19 seconds and change. Okay. Wow. Well, he's sitting on some power then. Cool. Yeah. 
There was a guy, Rhino Strength, that I noticed. He put up a cool two hands anyhow with uh, bottoms up kettlebell press. You, you, you familiar with two hands anyhow? I'm not, no. Okay, so a two hands anyhow is like you lift two items up over your head, and it's called anyhow because you can do it however you want to. So normally the huh. first one is done, maybe it's a two, two dumbbell, two hands anyhow. So maybe you have one dumbbell in your hand, and you clean it to your shoulder. Then you put it over your head maybe with a press or a push press. And then from there you do like an overhead windmill, bend down and pick up another dumbbell, and then you have to somehow get that to your shoulder and then press that overhead. Oh, wow. That's a lot so of it's, it's, a, you know, it's an old-time strongman lift. And this guy, Rhino Strength, is pretty darn good at these. So, again, it's been, well, if you look, if you look at November 5th on Rhino Strength, maybe this is it. No, he doesn't, he doesn't put the second one. The, the, point with it, with the, the point with the two hands, anyhow, is both implements end up over your head. And this guy, Rhino Strength, is super strong, man. This, this is really, really strong. Oh, it was in um, Chicago. Interesting. Yeah. He's a strong dude, man. And he's, you know, he's thick son of a gun. Can't tell how tall he is or whatever, but big kettlebells, lots of barbells, does some hammer stuff. Oh, wow. He's, he's, a, guy that, he's a guy to watch. Arms especially, that, dude. especially, yeah, dude, thick. Um, yeah. especially if you're into, uh, the kind of training, training where grip is super necessary for what you want to do, but you're not, you're not after the sporting aspect of grip. I mean, this is a guy that you can get some ideas from and inspiration for your training. Yeah. Wow. Well, he's got some cool stuff on here. Lots of kettlebell work. Yeah. Yeah. And kettlebell juggling too. Some pretty serious kettlebell juggling with like hundred pound kettlebells and plus. Yeah. You don't well, he's built a like a like a shot putter almost. It's kind of yeah. what I see when I. Huh. Interesting. I wonder what his background is. Doesn't show a whole. Whole lot. That's just he just seems like that type of a, that kind of athlete almost. Like he's mm-hmm. got some serious explosive power to really launch some stuff. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Nope. You uh, you know what have what have you seen recently, man? Give you a chance to talk about a couple. Um, I've been more or less following the the, the really current ones that have been going okay. on. Um, well, let's talk about was, some of those. So we know Tanner Merkel just absolutely smoked the the COC three cert. Mm, yeah. uh, had one of his one of his sessions with uh, uh, Tommy Jennings and Adam Glass. I. I don't remember seeing as, as dominant a cert as that. That thing came right out of the package, and he just completely slammed that thing shut. It was, yeah. it was effortless. I mean, no, no oil in the spring, no chest crushing. Just took it out and flattened it. <laughs> just amazing. So, big congratulations yeah. to him. Yeah, congratulations. I, I, uh, that, that's somebody that I think we should have on sometime and talk to him. Uh, we have. Actually, did we have Tanner on? We did. Yes. Yes. I can't remember. That? What the occasion was? Was it not after nationals? We Tanner? we 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 had him on though. Yeah, we did. We did. Yep. But that, we talked about him being like some. Uh, oh, he he works because he works in like a clinical setting. He's like some. Doesn't he have some involvement therapy. with like? Yes, yes, that's what it is. Yeah, we had him on. I just can't wow. remember what the topic was. Um, was I on? Or I can, was it when Ricardo yeah, was working with us? No, it was uh, just you. Uh, just you, me, and him that time. Let's see if I can wow. find that one. That was from quite a while back, but no recollection. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh boy. That's well, I, I talked to him about the cert, and um, he said, uh, "Let's see." Well, he said he, he said the the credit card with the three felt impossible for a while, and then all of a sudden it just clicked. And it feels great to cross it off the list. I said, "Yeah, I got to do the same someday." Because I, you know, I'd kind of like to recertify under the new rules, but I, I haven't prioritized it in a long time. And he says it almost pissed me off. Like back when I was training grippers, I sucked at CCS. The other day, I realized I could just do the CCS now. No change in training for grippers. And then hands up, like I don't know. So. 
did. It kind of came out of nowhere for him. Serendipity. No, yeah. No, crazy strong. I mean, he had a couple, couple inch farmers walks. I don't know if you caught that recently. Oh yeah, that man. Was, uh, yeah, that's actually how insane. I got the. I think that's how I got the conversation going because that was the video that I saw first. And uh, yeah, great double inch carry, bro. That's uh, that's how it got started. Yeah, very impressive. It, the way that he 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 really no sold it because the way that he wrote the, um the blurb down below the video it was it was like he was going to finish the workout by trying a double inch farmer's walk and he went and carried it like 26 feet or something yeah but then he set him down he didn't even dump it how we often see it you know so yeah. he I mean, that was that was that was impressive yeah i like to go until they're going to rip out of my hand and then i have to do like either some kind of survival leap or a jig or something <laughs> like that yeah big bail my toes yep well, Speaking of breaking toes, dude, you must have had a visitor over recently, huh? I did. Yep, yep. Devin Devin Brown came over. He's been here uh, a couple times now. Uh, he was here just yesterday. His his mission. So I've got a I have a regular inch dumbbell, and I also have a a, a steel inch. It's um it's made with the same handle specs as the regular inch bell. Um, when I had it made though, it came in heavy, so it weighs 179 pounds. Well, he wanted to lift them both, mm-hmm. so. He walks in. He doesn't even warm up, doesn't chalk up or anything. He gets his camera set up. He actually had to pull my one inch out. I got it kind of tucked back in this weird little corner, rolls him out, hits record on his phone, walks over, picks him up, deadlifts it, holds it for five seconds, then sets him down, walks over, and sees the battery low thing up on his screen. Never even recorded it. And then after that, he couldn't hit the feet. He kept. He was able to get it with his right hand, but he couldn't get his left hand to, to cooperate on the other one. He kept trying, but right. um, just couldn't quite lock it out. He wanted to shrug him. He, yeah. he, he wanted to do that because of the, the video that he'd just seen from you. Yeah. So, so if you but, guys um, haven't seen, this, Devin, Devin Brown is the muscle link. you got to find him on Instagram. We've talked about him a few times. And, uh, you know, one thing I'd point out here is that not only is the inch – quite level but even you know he took no liberties with the with the bracing or angling of the steel inch that you have that is perfectly level as well looks like he gripped it right in the center and didn't look like he ended up with the back back bell braced at all maybe for a fraction of a second but didn't utilize that as a as a method for stopping the rotation i mean it was a quite a strict lift you know he's got his his power is is absolutely insane Mm-hmm. And it's and the endurance that goes along with it, you know. He did that, you know, and then like it was like 45 seconds later, he tried doing it again and almost got it, you know. But then he goes for three hours straight doing other things and keeps cycling back, and it's almost like he gets stronger as the workout yeah. progresses, you know. So it's oh yeah, about he's a inch, inch dumbbell stuff. It's like I can lift the inch all day long. Like I never lose that ability anymore. Um, but uh, n- nothing else acts like that. You know, blob, maybe blob lifting or something like that, but the inch, like, continues to come up. It's like I never get tired, so maybe he's like that as well. He's a strong son of a gun, dude. What's he weigh, like 205? Yeah, he's he's um, right around 201, I think, right now. So, okay. yep, yep, I think he's thickening it up a little bit. He's got some arm wrestling competitions coming up. So <laughs> yesterday was his last training day because there's a, a competition coming up uh, – uh, this weekend for him, but you know, this is uh, it's funny. He he actually credits his the the grip training he's been doing over the past you know uh, months with with boosting up his arm wrestling training. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times we see things go the other way, but he's noticed that um, you know he grips up with people now, and it's like it's been a real game changer for him. You know, That's he's been cool. doing a lot of work like the wrist wrench, you know, uh, country crush and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, but um, yeah, so that was that was pretty awesome to hear that. I can tell you, yeah. gripping up with that guy, he brought his arm wrestling table here, right. and that is weird. You know, that's just a weird feeling because you, you know, like you shake his hand when he walks in, and you're like, "Yep, you know, ordinary guy." And on the arm wrestling table, it's like, he, like, it's like his eyes turn red. It's just like <laughs> it's weird. He's got some crazy power behind him. You know, <laughs> it's like you could lean in all day and just not move him. So I hope he gets a chance to arm wrestle Luke one day. I'm curious how that would uh, that would go down. But, uh, I, yeah, he must. He must. So the weight classes that he's usually in must be in the lighter weight class than what Luke wrestles, because you know 
Luke just walks around at like two ten, two eleven. So okay, you know. So I I don't know what the cutoff is for Luke's thing. I think it's like one ninety nine or something. So he's got to lose like five pounds each time. It's not not too much of a hassle. But, yeah, Devin kind of manipulates his weight quite a bit depending on where he wants to be. So like yeah. the next one he's going to compete. It's gonna be like it's gonna be arm wrestling like two hundred forty pound guys. Yeah. So let well, me ask you something, Alex. Right so uh, so this so this video where he almost crushes all ten toes of his is is on his. Instagram, but it's in your basement, correct? It is, yes. Yep. Okay, so what is the red structure here? It almost looks like a bent over row or like a like a chest supported row. Is that what? Oh, that that's is? a chest. That's a chest supported row. Yep. Yep. Okay. From a uh, uh, elite FTS. Okay. Yeah, that was how something you, on my like on my wish list for a while. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. It's it's oh, really that nice. new. Yeah, I've had it for um, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe a few months, three, four, five months, something like that. Okay. Yeah, it's it's nice. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, it just it takes a lot of the you know you see a lot of people doing rows and they turn it into full body exercises and mm, doing crazy like crap neck, with their neck. neck. Jerks. Yeah, yeah, and all that weird stuff. And I guess I kind of want to feel it in the right spots. Yeah, and that's just a good way of doing it. And it's got a couple handle choices. You know, there's the you know neutral grip, and then you have got the you know the the overhand type grip. Mm. So it's good. It's um. It's definitely not a one size fits all, you know. I would say, like, you know, for really shorter statured people, it's not going to work real good. You don't have the adjustability, and even if you're like super tall, you know, you'd probably chest, you know, that might get a little weird on you. But that uh, works great for me. I really like it quite a bit. So good. Well, that'd be a good addition to it, like a gym. You know, if somebody had it, you know, if it, you know, it's in the budget, you know, people really make advantage of that. That are like one of those uh, steel rows. Like we're seeing uh, people starting to come out with See another nice rows. machine out there. You know where you got those the the, the bench. It looks like a regular bench press, but um, the barbell runs underneath of it. Oh yeah, and you yep, more or less lay flat. Mm-hmm. Well, they make those yeah, sure. um, where they're higher now, and yeah, that's another great exercise too, in my opinion. We actually feel it in the right spot. Otherwise, you're doing this is weird. It's more like it's more like a deadlift. Like I, I don't even know what you'd call it. Seeing some of these people do these crazy rows. You know, but you're definitely not. I don't know how they're feeling in the back at all. <laughs> you right. know, maybe the yeah. lower back. <laughs> yeah. Lower back, uh, arms, and uh, scalenes, scalene muscles yeah. of the anterior neck. Yep. Anything but what you're trying to work. Yeah. Right. Well, that kind of, kind of, uh, when you see form like that, you can kind of understand why those people are incapable of locking out. Um, a lift and grip sport, even though they get the calls anyway, because well, I know they're it. ingraining they're ingraining that poor mechanics in every single lift that they do. So mm-hmm. they're lacking the rhomboid strength and the posterior deltoid and and all that stuff. So makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I see a lot of a lot of sh- a lot of shrug type things, almost yeah. that uh, <laughs> some of those deadlifts turn into even. <laughs> right. Now I got another guy, Alan, that I want you to check out here. Um, came up with a pretty cool idea, and this is going back to August 30th. But this guy is Eat, Move, Lift, and there's an underscore in between uh, each word. Eat, Move, Lift, and if you go back to August 30th, he put up a crazy dumbbell that he made using what looks like a Fat Bastard Barbell Pro Style dumbbell handle. Oh, I've seen this guy. And what he did was he like he tapped the what do you, what do you, help me out with the terminology he tapped the threads into the bottom of the kettlebells is that what is that what, the proper way to say that Alan Yeah yep yeah, yep yeah. he drilled and tapped it yep I'm yeah, looking at so, that right what do you, Oh he what made do you, a special handle Yeah oh, it, actually this looks handle. like I'm looking at this picture where he breaks it down and it actually looks like he had uh it, it more or less looks like the bottom of the, the kettlebell was drilled out and they installed a, a, stre- a threaded sleeve and welded that in place is how that looks. Yeah. So he had a he had a specific, True. very similar to that one. Oh, it's a fine thread at that. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. whoever did this. This was a, that was a fine craftsman. That yeah. welding work is nice. All of that work. That's some precision machining. I would, um, boy, if he, if, if he did it himself, otherwise, if he had somebody do that, I would say he probably could have bought, bought an inch dumbbell for what he must have paid to have that done. That looks like some expensive work. Yeah, I think he's in the U.K., so he wasn't able to find something. 
Oh, okay. Uh, he's okay. The Franken dumbbell. Well, it's pretty sharp. That's for sure. Yeah, that's real nice. Did he knock the? Did he knock the horns off it? I'm trying to find a picture where he. Where did he the last the picture in, in that in that multi upload, he's got it in a like a clean position. Or it's it's an actual video. So he does a partial one arm clean, and then right around thigh level, he puts his other hand on there to get it to his shoulder. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at um, 24 kilo kettlebells, so that's 53 pounds. And then uh, however it ends up weighing, you're looking at probably, you know, 100 to 115 pounds for that whole entire dumbbell. That's nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought Delmar Carter even whipped up something like that one time. If I'm not Maybe. mistaken, I might I, be wrong. You might I be right. I, I, it almost seems like yeah. I remember something like that. Yep. Lots of cool stuff going on. Oh, yeah. Let's see. I guess he's also got a scale weight. Yeah, he's got a scale weight here, 56-pound scale weight that he found that he lifted, inverted. Nice. Boy, yeah, getting lots of people added. I've I've seen him before. I guess I didn't realize I wasn't following him, but I know I've seen some of those pictures. Yeah. Maybe somebody might have shared that in something, I wonder. Maybe. Or how I'd found that. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so check him out. Mm-hmm. Check him out, everybody. What else, Alan? What, what, are their, uh, what other stuff we got to cover here? Um, let me get back to the This Week in Grip. I'm sure there's... We got a... We got another guy that had certified the, the Crush the Dust Challenge recently, uh, uh, Jason Dingy. Looks like he served that at the uh, the East Ohio uh, Grip Championships that was held not too right. long ago. I saw that on uh, Iron Mind News. So so congratulations to him. That's another uh, – we're, we're starting to see more and more of those, it seems like, popping up. A lot of people uh, asserting that, so good to see the interest there. Yep. Yep. Um, I think that's the big. I'm still waiting to hear back. I know uh, Mash Monster Six went out to uh, Valeri T. Huh. I hadn't heard if that was uh, in his possession. If he'd taken a crack at it yet or not. So right. he's the guy famous for smashing it shut and then holding the handles for like a while. <laughs> right. So, so hopefully that's not much of a challenge for him. He gets to move right up to the next level. So yeah. But uh, yeah, no, no, no recent news on that anyway. I see. So, if, if you're looking for some different ways to train, especially around holds, you want to check out Pinch Crush Lift. It's Anthony Vassatoro. Hopefully I didn't butcher that last name. But um, he goes a lot longer duration holds than I do. Like he's doing like 42-second holds with a 90-pound mm-hmm. uh, rotating dumbbell handle in a, in a Fat Grips Extreme. That's way beyond what I do. But it seems to look for – look. Uh, excuse me. It seems to work for him because – he continues to go up in in progress, so I would not train with that long of holds. But uh, it's working for him, so more power to him. <laughs> Joel Dirks talks about that same thing. Actually, it sounds like he's got a set of uh, uh, rolling handled farmers implements, and and one of the things he does, and, and some of the people he trains with do, it sounds like they load this thing way up at like the end of a workout. And they'll hold it for time, but they'll get upwards like, like you know, a minute, even 90 seconds, you know. Right. Like 150 pounds or more in each hand. And mm-hmm. just wait till it just, you know, rips things apart. And I don't know. It, it, that's what he's doing in particular. Whatever it is, it's working, though. I mean, he's got a seriously strong grip. So. Right. You know, I've never personally held things for that long. But, uh, I mean, well, if I could ever, you know, hold the blob for that long, it would be pretty awesome. But, yeah. um Otherwise, I hadn't tried that. Maybe 10 seconds, 12 seconds, about the most I ever work with. I hear you. So, yeah. Yep. But worth trying, though. It's working for somebody. Yeah. I get it there for everybody else. Now, did you do uh, did you do the Denny Stone deadlift uh, attempts that uh, the Grip Sport IG page was was talking about? I didn't. No. Did um, no. That that for whatever reason that just doesn't doesn't appeal to me personally. It, I think it's cool seeing people do that, but it just looks, uh, it just, I only have one ring and, um, it just looks like really uncomfortable, yeah. you know? So, well, but I, but admittedly though, I'm not going to be, there's no way I'm going to be pulling you know, 400 pounds like some of these guys are doing, you know, yeah, it, it's you. only be, so. Well, they had, yeah. they had the, the 
Denny lift or our ring deadlift or whatever it is at uh, Sonadoza's competition yesterday and uh, Renderly tore his hand to hell. It looked like cheeseburger. Oh, it was all done. So yeah. I think he tore like three calluses. Oh, no. I, was, I mean, I see, you know, I saw, you know, Joel Zerk hit like, what, 380 on that. I think one of his training partners hit like, you know, upwards of 400. There was some the guy, his name's, uh, what was it, Devin Hoover. Um, on Instagram, he hit like, you know, 740 pounds total. He wasn't a big yeah. guy, at least not that I saw. He's so, under 90 I mean, kilograms. Yeah. So these guys, I mean, it's, it's even some, some lighter dudes. They're yeah. pulling some pretty big weight on these things. Yeah, dude. You and know? no hook so, grip either. That's like, uh, you know, yeah, that's a regular, um, support grip, no hook grip. So yep. really nice work. No, that's, that's, that's cool seeing that. But yeah, that's just, I don't know. Have you tried that? I mean, does that, I would just think that would hurt like hell. <laughs> no, I've, I've never you done, know? I've, as far as I recall, dude, I've never done the two ring lift with loading pens because it, oh. I'm, I'm just leery of it with my back. It just doesn't yeah. seem like something that's, that, that would be a good choice for me. Well, it's got to dig in when that weight starts getting up there too, I would think, you know, mm-hmm. you, you definitely got to be feeling that in the, in the hands, you know? Right. But, yeah. So Joel's got a video up that um, Iron Grip Club shared where he did like 80 plus pounds on the hub. Did you see that? I did. Yeah. Yep. yep. Looks like it's tilted a little bit. I wonder if Joel knows that you're supposed to keep that level. There was, yeah, there was a little tilt, um, and uh, he had messaged me actually about that, and there was some interaction between him and uh, uh, Jerome Bloom, even. Oh, is and, this uh, in the comment section here because I this see is. The, uh, Th- th- things kind of went south uh, real you. quick, so I was just going to kind of. Uh, I didn't even want to address it, you know. I, I think just, w- right. Well, I well just but I will I now. Didn't know that it was supposed to be level. Joel's just a savage, it, strong dude. I don't. I don't think it, he's really keeps up on it, all the rules and stuff like that. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. And and he sent me a video after the fact, and I don't know if he made it public or not, mm-hmm. but he did it very strict. He hit seventy five pounds. Mm-hmm. Um. He wasn't doing anything. He, he, he didn't even know he was doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. Right. But That's the, what I'm the, the problem exactly. is, yeah. What what happened though? What took place in the comments? I know Joel personally. He's a nice guy, real helpful. Um, I've not met Jerome Bloom, but I have the same impression of him. Super nice mm-hmm. guy. I think had that conversation taken place, like not via the internet in person, mm-hmm. these two might actually like each other at some point. <laughs> right. But it's one of those deals where it just it comes out, you can interpret something that's written in two different ways. You know, if you yeah. don't have, like, the body language to go with it, and, yeah. So, I, I you. you know, I hope those two didn't get the wrong impression of each other, but unfortunately that's kind of how it, how it looks. Right. But, um, but, but Jerome's, a, I mean, you know what? He's, he's a lighter guy. He's a stickler. He's very strict about his lifts. He's strong. You know, he's, he's pulling some weight. You know, I get it. You know, we kind of we kind of police ourselves a little bit, but um, yeah, it, uh, it's too bad that couldn't have gone a little bit differently, unfortunately. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a shame. Um, well, speaking of Jerome, I see that he's got a he's been putting up some two fingers and thumb lifts on the flask recently. And yeah, he needs to stop that crap numbers. already. Outlifting people with two fingers—that's uh, that's going too far, Jerome. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was going to talk about breaking out the stub the other day, but then I saw that and I was like, nah, I'm not going to give right. the satisfaction. <laughs> that's funny. Hitting almost eighty pounds though, that's ridiculous. You know, he um, what was it? He was so he he was successful on the it was seventy seven point three eight, but then he had like seventy eight point seven. He's real precise in his lifts. He called it a near miss, but I saw that. That looked like about a legal lift to me though. Mm. You know, generally he's lifting the lockout, but I think that might have made it. It would have been close if he'd have had the crossbar and stuff set up. I think. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, I, I I haven't seen what he what he can do on the flask though when he actually pulls with all his digits on it. Yeah, you know, not sure. if he's if he's upwards of ninety or something, I don't know. He's got to be up pretty high. We'd have so, to we'd have to look at the King Kong results, I guess. Yeah. Oh, did did he actually compete in King Kong? I thought he did. Maybe he did. Not. He did. That's right. I remember seeing that thing about him on the uh, on the crusher, something right. like that. Because you know his his 
he wasn't gifted with an overwhelmingly large hand. So I think he, he struggled on that one a little bit. I remember seeing some remark about that, actually. Yeah. So, uh, uh, well, maybe somebody can set us straight in the comments then on that one. But, yeah, that's a, that's a huge lift. Right. I'll tell you what, dude. Uh, Andrew Dube, I did not see this when it came out, but he did a 500-pound deadlift no hook grip, double overhand. Did a sumo did a sumo 500 pounds after a big inhalation of uh, some kind of smelling salts. That's a that's a big <laughs> lift, dude. That is that is yeah no I missed that I didn't I didn't see that at all actually. Now he might be pulling Whoa. from a little higher I can't tell like the discs that are on there the plates they might be a little bit taller than like your normal plate I can't tell but man that's did still I follow him I could have swore my my feed is so messed up on some of these things. Let me, I'm going to try to see if I can find that here. Does it, is that actually what he goes by? Is Andrew Dube? Andrew or does he have a different name? R. Dube. Brian Hunsacker with a nine-second oh, hold of a of the silver bullet with the number four captains across recently. You go ahead and look that I'm up. I'm going to cycle down through and see what else we got here, big man. Well, that looks. Well, those are definitely taller plates, but I can't tell if those are. They might be standard, and his other ones might just be like those smaller, kind of odd ones. Right. Well, no, that's a 450 I'm looking at. I guess I don't see the five on here. Huh. Yeah, now, Brian Huntsacker. Who, who is who uh, is Chrome Monkey? K R O M E M U N K E Y. This is a lady. Chrome monkey, I'm not even familiar with Oh, wait, that is that the girl that was in that video that Amy Waddles posted where she had the rolling thunder that wouldn't move? Oh, it monkey, was just, it was just on today. There, it kind of looks like that girl. I don't even... Oh, that's a ha... That's a hashtag. No, I'm not finding that one. I don't know. She's, putting, she's knocking, out, knocking out some axle reps in preparation for a contest. I didn't recognize her. No worries. Yeah, no, I'm not finding it, I guess. All I'm doing is cycling down through the This Week in Grip hashtag, everybody. So if you're listening to this, you can probably go down through and see a lot of the videos that I'm talking about. And right now I'm looking at uh, Jason Gonzalez's uh, uh, Crush Dust certification attempt. Which from oh, what did I he get it? it? Well, from what I understand, it got vetoed or whatever because of his Rolling Thunder stopping a little shy of lockout. That's what I heard. He he lifted it. He lifted the two hundred pounds, but it was kind of like mm. a a partial where he 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 pulled it, paused it, and held it. He just wasn't locked out all the way. So oh, where was that? Where was that done on? The, uh, that that, that, that was at that the time. Mike Saffel or Mike Safel, um the competition, the East Ohio or whatever. You mentioned it earlier. Oh, the East. Ohio. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Interesting. Did did Iron Mind are they the ones that 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 bucked it or? I believe. I, I I'm not sure. Luke Luke told me it got uh, turned down though. I, I I'm not sure where. Oh okay. Where it was. okay. I'm assuming Iron Mind. All right. You got to follow this Iron Grip Club, dude. They do a lot of sharing of uh, cool. Yeah, I, strength stuff. I saw that. Yeah. Yep. They, they have a lot of good stuff. Dali like Zhang that. doing the, the 35 pound hub hold, really big, wide, uh, like six inch hub. I have plates like that as well. Stand Talking right about hubs, people. did you see Nigel Blackburn's pistol where he picked up the hub from the ground? Yes. Oh, yes. He, he's 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 just an athlete, but that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Do, do it, doing a pistol squat is like cool in itself, but then you pick up the hub from the ground and he stood right up with it. That was yeah. that was just ridiculous. He's very athletic, you know? dude. Oh yeah, that's impressive. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he's real straight. He had a he had a big big rolling thunder pole. He was hitting. He called it the older style, but it's the it's the older new style though, really. Yeah. Um, but it's still like 160 over his body weight on that mm-hmm. thing. So, yeah, that's awesome. James yep. Rodriguez doing some uh, doing doing some pinching here recently. Oh, I saw the you know those those high poles with those plates. 
I would think that'd be that'd be tough, you know, yeah. doing it like that, especially because as your arm angle changes, I would think you'd really have to try to try to you know dig in a little extra with your grip to yeah, like an over squeeze. Yeah, because that's got to change how your you know your grip's working through that whole thing. Yeah. You know? I mean, the, but it looks like mind, it's, this is a guy that just came out of shoulder surgery as well. I mean, he didn't yeah. have the kind of deal that you had going on, but I mean, he's right back into it. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's doing good. I said the last video I saw. It's actually not the ones that I'm looking at right now. It looks like he's out of his sling now. I'm not sure what what training he's able to do with his other side. Yeah. If he's still got to cool it for a little while yet, but yeah, he um, it looked like he he tried stopping the plates with his other arm. So apparently he's uh he's doing good in that regard anyway. So right. So the lady that I was talking about earlier is Lisa Polari Cromer. Chrome Monkey K R O M E M U N K E Y. Oh, that's Chrome cool. Monkey. Okay. You got to follow her. She's putting up a lot of this week in grip posts, and I know that she's. I know that she was training for. Yeah, I think. I, what, well, I'm. A, I'm assuming what she was training for is Amy Waddle's competition that she was holding. Oh, is she like a like a figure competitor? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's just pro strong woman physique strong woman and physique competitor. Wow. That's a, a blend we don't see a lot. Right. Okay. Jeepers, I didn't even see this. So on, on the on the back side of the video, or whatever you call it when you upload two videos at once from Tanner, he did a pinch pull-up on Adam's uh, pinch pull-up setup, a one-arm pinch pull-up. Yeah. Like a one-arm pull-up <laughs> on one of the pinch grips. No, <laughs> what the hell? That's insane. Yeah. So... Um, I don't know. I think you saw the little debate I got into like a week or two ago about um, the pound for pound strongest strongest grip guy on YouTube. Oh, I, I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. You were uh, you were suggesting it was Tanner. Yeah, and um, and, 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 and some I would, other I would fellow... invite anyone that's listening today to weigh in with who they think is like the pound for pound strongest guy in grip. Okay, and uh, you know this was it's on my video about Dennis Rogers that I put up. Someone asked about Dennis Rogers, who um, his tagline is pound for pound strongest man for the feats he performs. So I gave you know, some information about uh, what I know about Dennis. And then someone asked me who I thought was pound for pound the strongest guy in grip, and I immediately said Tanner because, you know, just just f the fact that he's totally destroyed me in two King Kongs, um, also in Nationals, um, and he weighs, what, 70 pounds less? With me at 250, well, he's at like 180, right? Yeah, yep, he's 83K. Yep. More yep. or less. Light so, 83K, yep. Yeah. So this guy, Chris Stewart, comes on and says that it's Tommy Heslop. I'm like, dude, you got to understand, Tanner Merkel would beat Tommy Heslop on, on Tommy's best day right now. There, there's, like, no, no comparison. And he was saying that, well, you know, Tommy's lifted the inch dumbbell and certified on the number four. And I'm like, yeah, dude, it's, not, it's still not even close. I mean, come on. It, it's just not even close in my opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm, I welcome anybody else's feedback and stuff like that, but I asked the guy what, what he was basing it on, and he just didn't come up with anything that was convincing to me to change my mind to think it was Tommy Heslop. And I have a lot of respect for Tommy Heslop. I've known him for a long time. I, the, first comp the first competition I did, Battle for Grip Supremacy, Tommy was there and came in, like, third place or something like that. So I, I'm very familiar with Tommy Heslop, but... Uh, just basing it on, uh, on an inch dumbbell lift and cl uh, certifying on the number four back when you could use whatever four you wanted to. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, but it, I just I just can't give Tommy the nod there. No, I mean, and this I think this guy was working a bit of a different angle too. But um, I, I would I I agree completely that Tanner is mm -hmm. is hands down you know pound for pound. Yeah. Right. Um, crazy strong yeah. with the things that he's done, and we haven't even seen it all yet. You right. know, I mean. He's so new to it, and and yeah, I mean, really, it, he came in and started dominating right away, and he's only gotten better, you yeah. know. And he's young; there's plenty of room to grow. Yeah. And you know, and he he hasn't even taken the official, you know, full on grip commitment. You know, I mean, that's still kind of a part time gig for him. You know, right. I mean, he's he's more or less kind of committed to the to the rock climbing thing yet. You know, he he acknowledges that, you know, it's he does have some some body strength things that 
you know, he's kind of indicated might be holding him back. Mm-hmm. And he just doesn't necessarily want to put on a little bit of weight, you know, that would detract from one thing to advance him in the other. Yeah. I completely get that, you know. And I would yeah, say he, he probably also, doesn't even need to. He's killing it right now anyway. So. <laughs> and he needs to you know. expand his wardrobe because I swear he's got the same two pairs, of, you know, sets of clothes on in every single video, including when I saw him in Texas. So it's, it's getting a little old. We can, we can mix that up, maybe get some Zuba pants, maybe get a tank top, something like that. I think that would be good. We can mix it up. I mean, he lives in Texas where it's like 90 all year round, never snows. Let's go. Let's go, brother. Yep. Somewhere in that 12-hour drive across Texas that you make sometimes, there's going to be another store that you can grab some extra clothes. So let's, let's vary it up a little bit. Your name's not Philip Phillips wearing gray on gray every single day. <laughs> we're coming up on an hour here alan so we probably want to wrap it up i, I want to give a nod to eli kerr he's really done a great job i've worked with him this year for most of the year and he ended up pulling like over 400 pounds on the axle at the uh oh boy what was the competition called it was on november 3rd it was the weekend of my uh, grand opening at my gym. I was going to go down to West Virginia and uh, help out with the competition, but I ended up that uh, that got scheduled and I couldn't go. But early, Eli Kerr did fantastic. John 400 Miser, pounds on an axle. Sorry? That's, that's 400 pounds on an axle. That's badass. That's yeah, right, that's, man. You know, nice. Nice. How big of a dude is this? Uh, he's a pretty big dude. I mean, Okay, he's, okay. He's like 300 pounds. Um, okay. Goes by right. The Kerr 53. The K E R R 53. He is a strong dude, man. Oh, that's a big axle. 2017 yeah, West Virginia it. Tough Man Champ, all around badass. Is tough man, man Champ. <laughs> I'll tell you I what, love dude, it. And I'll, honestly, dude, that could be true for all I know. He has never brought that up one single time. Never once. I didn't know time. there was still that kind of stuff going on. They used to have 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 Tough Man things around uh, around my parts here. Mm-hmm. It's been years. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay. Cool. So I don't know if you'll hear that, but he's done a great job, worked with him most of the year, and really impressed with how much he how much he improved. Everything that I asked him to do, he did, and it all worked. Huge rolling thunder numbers, huge axle, accomplished, I think, every goal that he had this year, even got um, the Crush to Dust Challenge. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you're going to be getting fired soon then. (laughs) Right. He isn't going to need you anymore. Nope. Oh, cool. Anything else before uh, wrapping up the show, Alan? No, I just wanted to mention one guy. I don't know if anybody's seen him, but he's he's, uh, Gareth Keeping Mm -hmm. on on Instagram. I was seeing a a 20-kilogram pinky rim lift. Dude, sick. Never seen I, I did doing not that. see that until we were just talking, and I ended up shoveling past it. But I did not even have him on my follow list. I followed him just today, so yeah. good call there. I'm not going to try that. No way. No. <laughs> no. But it's awesome that he did. Yeah, it didn't look like it bugged him much, but that was, yep, that's not on my to-do list, though. Yeah, Mike McMillan no. was doing that when he was here for King Kong as well, and it was uh, it's too 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 much too much for me. Too yeah. For me. No, I think something would come undone. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Other than that, though, I think just trying to think if there was anything else that I that I missed. No, I think that pretty much covers the biggest. That yeah, covers them. Yeah. Cool. Good. Well, uh, hope everybody enjoyed the show. Um, I don't know what we'll be covering next week or when the next show will be, but. Uh, you know, since we have Thanksgiving coming, but I certainly do wish everybody in the U.S. a happy Thanksgiving. And then, you know, coming up pretty soon after that is going to be Gripmas. And I spoke with uh, Chris Rice today on Messenger, and he's open open to coming on after the event to talk about that and the history of Gripmas and uh, you know stuff like that. So that'll be coming up here pretty soon. I'm sure we'll be covering more feats and uh, other stuff that's going on on big YouTube channels. I know Juju Mufu's got a series coming out with Brian Shaw, so we'll be talking about yes. that. Um, what other stuff might be might we be talking about here coming up pretty soon, Alan? I don't know. I know, you know, at some point, I, I think Joel Zersh was going to be getting up to uh, do a training session with Brian Shaw. So I'm looking forward to seeing some results from that. I thought it'd be cool to get him on, too. Do some yeah. highlights from that. Um, 
yeah, otherwise, I think, I guess that's the, I guess Drifness is the next big one on the horizon. On our end, yeah. So. You yeah. know, the other thing that I was thinking of, Alan, uh, I meant to bring this up before we got on the phone, uh, before we got on the recording, but I uh, forgot. So that that podcast that I watch on YouTube all the time, Something to Wrestle With, it's a pro yeah. wrestling podcast, and a lot of times what they'll do is they is if they have like they might have like three or four topics that they might cover and then they have a poll that they'll do on like Facebook. So maybe we could do that like set up a poll on uh one of our accounts and have people go there and vote and then that'll be the what decides what we end up covering in some of our shows. What what would you think about that? Oh, well, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, or, or they could uh yeah, people could chime in on on somebody they want us to bring on even or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Be a bad idea. So I definitely like to get more uh, more people on here that we wouldn't hear from. Tanner, getting Tanner Merkel on again, be awesome. I agree about yeah. that one. Right. So, uh, awesome. All right. Cool, man. Well, maybe we'll do that. Figure out how to do polls. I'm sure it's not too hard. People do it all the time, so I'm sure we. Can yeah. Out. All right. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Alan. Take it away, brother. All right, well, that is episode 75 of This Week in Grip. Everybody, hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below. And uh, we'll be back in the near future to uh, uh, do this again. We'll see you later.